All right, here we go, guys. It's uh, Sunday, September 18. Charter today was canceled, but uh, as it turns out, yesterday we had a boat issue, uh, a leak somewhere. So we got the boat at the boat yard getting straightened out. Hopefully not the tanks, but I digress. We'll see what it is this week. Hopefully we're uh, going to do another picking boats by the side of the road. I saw a lot of boats yesterday. I had to drive to the boat yard, uh, you know, after the, the boat was brought there. And yeah, I, I, I saw some really, really old ones that I presume are really cheap, if not free, but I have no idea. Uh, and I also saw a, a very interesting aluminum boat, but not a, a bigger aluminum boat. It looked like a Pacific, but it, it had the lines of a privateer. We're gonna hit that one first. It's on our way, it's in Kutchog. It's on Depot Lane. We've been here before. Uh, we looked at two really cheap, dilapidated boats, and that's what we're gonna be doing a lot of today. Uh, here's Depot Lane right now, and this boat is at the end of this street, so we'll get there in a second and we'll check it out. All right, it's right after the railroad tracks. Here it is, like a little doghouse, pilot house, center council, work boat. Looks like a privateer and a Pacific if, if they uh, if they merge. Let's, let's go take a closer look at it. All right, here it is. Single axle trailer, really rusted I-beams. Yeah, definitely aluminum. There it is. It's a custom built, all welded plate aluminum, North Atlantic inboards, custom main built, asking 10,000 or best offer as is, 561-441-1617 or 13, I can't really tell. But really cool boat. Look at this exhaust. This is the exhaust? It might be. Okay, so it needs a new floor. A lot of plywood in here. But a really cool boat. Three piece hull. You could see, I'll try to show it here. This top piece is a cap that sits on top of it. I mean, it's pretty solid. There's the doghouse. Gets you out of the elements when you're driving to your spot. 10K. Well, little scuppers here. Clearly the, uh, this might be the exhaust too. I don't know a lot about inboards. Prop is missing. And uh, looks like maybe the engine and transmission are missing. Again, <coughs> Excuse me. I would expect those to be down here somewhere. You're you're basically getting the shell of the hull for 10k. But uh, this would be a cool project for somebody. Definitely a project boat. And it did say or best offer. Um, I'm sure building this boat will cost a lot more than what it would cost to refurbish. See the spray rails here too. This deflects uh, the chop as you're in rough seas. What did the dead rise look like? Yeah, and it's an 87, and they're NAC North America, whatever the name was, I don't remember. Yeah, it's a really shallow dead rise. Dead rise is the V on the back of the boat. This, this looks minimal, maybe. You know, <laughs> four, eight degrees, I don't know. It's not much more than that. But yeah, all right. Cool little first boat, definitely a project boat. And that's gonna be the theme today, I think, because each of these boats and, and the ones we're gonna show at the end, I'm gonna make one stop after this. They just put them out and there's like four of them in a line and one looks older and more beat up than the other, but I'm curious on their prices. I wouldn't be shocked if some of them were free, but we'll see. Uh, is there a registration? Let's see. Yeah, the registration is uh, 
maybe on the other side. Curious when the last time. Oh, this is rich. The lock, so nobody steals it. Yeah, it's it's scratched off. I'm curious when this was last in the water. Uh, I heart oysters. I wonder. Yeah, this was probably a commercial oyster boat. Yeah, again, needs a lot of work, but you got the shell done here, and. I don't know, I think it's cool. Pilot House is in good shape. All right, let's go to the uh, the second boat. I know that one costs 5,000. This one is 10, the next one is five because they just put yesterday, I saw a big sign on it, $5,000 on it, and it's a bigger boat. Uh, so we'll check it out next. All right, this other boat is, we're back on Route 25. Uh, we're, I think, still in Kutchog. Eastern Long Island on the North Fork. Heading into Peconic soon. The bridge lane, which is ahead, is in Peconic, so could be wrong. But I know it's uh, it's right up ahead somewhere, so let's see what we got. Here it is. Let's pull over on the right side. Five thousand dollars. All right, we'll go check it out. Yeah, we're on the North Fork Wine Trail. All right, we could make our way across the street. For sale, 1986 Gas V8. Runs well. $5,000. It's a slick craft. There's the number if anyone's interested. 203 667 1040. I kind of wish I had brought my drone. I could have done some flyovers on it. Well, they do say it's a uh, inboard inboard gas. I'm sure it's a V8. I guess it would be a 350. Looks like it has a nice cabin. Obviously, not going to see a lot with this. Not going to step inside. Uh, Nassau Point. Oh, it's a local boat. Nassau Point is right here. Inboard, outboard. Looks like it's in decent shape. It's got to be a water fill up, I would assume. Okay. So an 86 for 5K. And it runs well. There's a radar arch on it if you wanted to add radar. Can we see when this was last registered? Oh, okay. 24. So they last three years, so theoretically this could have been in the water last year. All right. This is a quick one. Now let's let's get to the real fun stuff. The the four boats in a row that all look like uh, they've seen better days. Get back to the car across the street and continue our journey east on Route 25. All right, we're in South Hold now. We're pulling up, just a little bit up the road is my boat yard. And again, I had to drop the boat off yesterday because of a fuel leak. And much to my surprise, there were, it was like a boat picking video dream. There were four old boats. Hello ladies. Right on the side of the road. Uh, lined up. One looked worse than the next. Here's my boatyard. Albertsons. My boat's at a dock here on the right. It's coming up here. They should be on our left side. I should start slowing down. They were like lined up one after the other. Yeah, there they are. Pull in here. Yep, four of them. Let's get in here. All right, let's see what we got. This this was very interesting to me. Here's a better shot of them. Uh, none of them on trailers. This might be my favorite here. <laughs> 
just by the name. Diamond in the rough. You can't make this up. Actually, it doesn't look that bad inside. The floor looks like it was redone at some point. Is this a little grady? What is this? This is an old Merc 115. Uh, it almost looks like a Tower of Power, but I don't think it is. I think those were the six cylinders. I, I could be wrong. Serviced by Romeo Diamond. That's a good sign. Uh, it's not a grady. This looks maybe like a Wellcraft. Let's see. Let's see what we can find out. We'll look this up. PLC is what it starts with. It's a 92, so I'm presuming that engine is a 92. Is there a for sale sign on this one? Maybe this one's not for sale. The model is a 192, so it's a it's a 19 foot uh, dual console. Looks like at one point it had. Garmin Electronics on it. Like I said, the floor looks like it's in good shape. I'll see what PLC stands for. I don't see a... I mean, I'm going by the lines. It looks like a well-craft little area up here, but not really like a, a more modern dual console where you can sit. Uh, this is just another place, I guess, to come up and fish, throw the anchor, some storage up here. All right. This is a Wellcraft V184. It's free. There's no area code, but I presume it's 631-765-2445. Ask for Will. If you want that other boat, maybe you can ask for Will and see if he knows what, what the story. This is actually an Imperial. Again, another brand I never heard of. ALS. And this one is a... Is that a 78? It looks like a 78. So this is a older boat yep there's a six cylinder more cruiser a three liter a little rusty but looks like it's complete looks like there's some oil it could be water I guess um, carpeted there's the cover for the engine nice uh, instrument panel up here this one does have unlike that one the, tr the seats you would expect on a dual console uh, it's free. Oh boy, has not has not been registered since 09, meaning 06. This was registered. Here's another one for sale. Again, Will. This one is lacking an engine, and the transom has cracks in it. See that? You see the the little aluminum, and it's a plywood plywood transom, and it's flexing. This one would need a lot of work. I uh, NTL, it's an 83, it's a Grady White. Okay, it's a 204 overnighter. For years, this was the the staple of Northeast Fishermen. I'll tell you what, the floor's in good shape. Um, and it's got a lot of room on it. I mean, a good buddy of mine restored his 86 or 87. It was his dad's boat for years. And when his dad passed away, the boat sat for years. They spent a ton of money restoring it out of, you know, nostalgia. But these were the, the workhorses for many years here on the east end of Long Island. You saw these boats everywhere. They had a nice little cabin, a uh, lot of fishing room. They rode pretty good. I've driven his. Surprisingly good ride for a small boat. Uh, but yeah, this one would need an engine and it would need that, uh, you know, I would <clears throat> redo the transom. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't know how the fuel tanks are. You'd have to buy an engine. And last but not least, also free. Ask for Will, same number. Let's see what we got here. We don't even have any type of identification on this one. Um, this might have been re-glassed. It's another Grady White, though. Looks older than that one. I, I would guess this is a 70s vintage. This is... Wow, <clears throat> what's the engine? It's a 110 Johnson. VRO, so it, it's definitely a more modern model. VRO was their oil injection system. Uh, but yeah, oh, it comes with a vintage fishing rod too, and a vintage net, and a vintage tackle box. But this is the style of boat I grew up fishing. Uh, 
not sure what they call they're called. I, I want to say cathedral halls, but don't I could be wrong. Where you basically have that enclosed front. And you got a little storage under there. And then back-to-back -back seats. Again, a, it looks like a plywood floor. How's the transom on this one? Well, this one looks better. I mean, I would buy this thinking or <laughs> acquire it thinking you need to redo that engine. Uh, and I don't know how this would handle a modern four-stroke, even a small one. It probably weighs a lot more than that. Um, all in all, this one doesn't look like it's in terrible shape. I mean, out of the four of them, I would probably go with this one. Maybe just for nostalgia, but it, it looks like it's in the best shape. But there you go. Not, not, uh... <laughs> Not exactly yellow fins and Freemans and uh, CVs here. These are these are boats that somebody gave up on, and and it, it does look like somebody detailed these. At, at least clean the sides. They 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 you know cosmetically they don't look terrible, but clearly they would all need a, a decent amount of work. Uh, <clears throat> I'm presuming this one is part of the package and would also be free, this Imperial or whatever it was. But we don't know what this one was. This is the one we have to look up. The PLC. We'll see what that stands for. Alright guys, I'll offer some thoughts in the car on the way home. Alright, we just uh, we just left those four free boats. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little rant here. The little rant's going to be in my opinion, what's disappeared, forget affordable boats in general, in my opinion, what's disappeared from the used boat market is that mid-tier, not, you know, depreciated small boat. So in years past, if you wanted to get into boating and you wanted a, a small center console, Good example, in 2009, I sold my 19-foot, three-year-old center console, a Maycraft 19, for $12,500. Uh, that market is gone. A, a, a new center console that might have cost, you know, 22-footer that might have cost 70 grand a few years ago, should be selling, a three-year-old boat like that should be selling for 40, 35. That's gone. They're gonna be selling for almost what they cost new and we have a video from last year, I think, where some of those boats have appreciated in value. There was a Robalo a dual console that, that went up 50% over new. And that that and now when you're looking for those affordable boats in quotes, you can't see my air quotes here, what you're going to get are boats like this, the $10,000 boat with no engine out drive that needs a new floor, but it looks like it's structurally sound. Um, these free boats that obviously need a lot of work, that $5,000 boat that's older and no trailer and you know we don't know what little quirks it has. Gone, I think, are the days, at least for now. We'll see with the, with the economy the way it is, what happens. But gone are the days where you know these used boats depreciated enough in value that you could pick one up pretty cheap. Uh, and, you know, half, 50% off what it cost three, four years ago. It's gone with cars too. That's what the, this hyperinflation, I shouldn't say hyperinflation, but this inflation environment we're in is causing. Anyway, let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.